Deep breaths, people. Deep, deep, deep breaths. Inhale the calm, exhale the anxiety. <laughs> or at least try to. Let's go. Take that mental illness. Hello, my friends, and welcome to Youth Potential, a place where we talk about all sorts of things related to mental health. Whether you feel good or whether you feel meh, this place is for you. Also, I've got an Instagram account. Please go and check that out. Hello, my friend Scott here representing Youth Potential. So today we're going to be talking about a change that's coming into uh, the benefit system for people with mental health and other disabilities here in the UK. Um, now, just because you're not from the UK, perhaps, just watch this video and let me know like what the laws and welfare system is like in your country. It'd be interesting to know, you know, like the differences. But anyway, so recently in the news, there's been word of changes to people's benefits, um, which is a financial thing here in the UK. If you've got like a disability that's mental health related, for example, uh, you can claim benefits or welfare, whatever you call it, from wherever you're from. And that helps a lot of people. It helps a lot of people who are struggling to get a job or struggling to sustain a job or struggling to even apply for a job in the first place. Now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out one of these articles that I've uh, read, fished out throughout the week, and it's going to explain kind of what's going on in terms of the changes to these benefits, because what's going to happen is, is that they're looking to actually reduce the benefits. Now, on the surface, on the surface that does sound like it's just a bad thing straight off the bat, okay? But before you make up your mind, before you leave a comment and tell me what you think, what I want you to do is just listen to this, listen to this article and I'm going to explain my thoughts and feelings behind this pot potential change. And then you can leave your comments too afterwards. So this is uh, from The Guardian, it's a British uh, English newspaper, sorry. And the headline is, people deemed unable to work face having benefits reduced under DWP plan. Now, DWP is the Department uh, for Working Pensions. And this is the part of the government that sorts out and administers, if you like, the, uh, the benefits to people that have got mental health issues and are struggling to work. So the subheading, and this is a really interesting one because I didn't think that they would actually use something like this. And it says, those with a history of self-harm could face penalties if they do not seek work after change in categorization. Now, my interpretation of that is that basically you can't use self-harm as an excuse to stay out of getting a job because at the end of the day we do all have to you know contribute in some sort of way in life and for most of us you know we have to work but I, I think having the word you know having it say self-harm could face penalties if they do not seek work it's it's quite a bold statement so the working and pension secretary has outlined some plans and this article from the Guardian continues as follows. People deemed unable to work, including those with a history of self-harm or at a risk of killing themselves, could have their benefits reduced and face penalties under new government plans. I mean, that in itself sounds like it's going to rattle a few cages. Under the proposals, which aim to make it harder for people who are long-term sick to claim benefits. Ministers are hoping to reduce the number of people deemed unable to work 
as a part of wider plans announced in the spring back to work budget. So on Tuesday, Mel Stride, who is the uh, Working and Pension Secretary, outlined plans to change the, categorize, the categories related to mobility and social interaction, which are used to determine the amount of financial support a sick person receives and whether they are required to look for work. The next sentence, uh, sorry, the next paragraph says, Stry said the new practices, such as the ability to work from home, could allow some people deemed unable to work to move closer to work uh, for, for a more fulfilling life. Those people would get appropriate support tailored to their individual circumstances allowing them to safely access the life-changing impacts that can uh, that work can provide he said so currently there are 2.4 million of the most unwell or disabled people claiming benefits are categorized as having limited capacity for work and work related activity they receive about 390 pounds a month um extra on top of their basic universal credit rate but what what this person wants to do this uh mel stride is change that so that individuals are going to get sort of like less less money because at the end of the day they are paying out a lot of money they are paying out a lot of money and people with mental health conditions disabilities however you want to label it are relying on this money and the cost of living you know is going up or has gone up significantly and having money stripped away that's kind of you know burning the candle at both ends and it's really really my biggest concern my biggest concern of them all is that people that are having their money some of their money taken away are going to feel sort of ostracised, isolated, um, kind of like a, perhaps feeling like a lower person of society because of the amount of income they've got or the amount of money they have. In, in my job, my actual full-time job that I work, I work with a lot of people that don't have a lot of money and they can just about afford to live. Obviously, they have issues with managing their funds and you know they live a costly lifestyle should we say but they rely heavily on what the government pays out for them all the you know all the tax money paying paying out for it having money taken away i just i feel like there's going to be a large group of people that are going to really struggle with that and it's going to worsen their mental health. Which brings me on to the next part of this news article. So they've got someone from Mind here commenting on this uh, decreases to the benefits. So Vicky Nash, Associate Director of External Relations at Mind, the mental health charity, said people needed well-resourced mental health services, not work coaches pressured to deliver mental health support without right training and that's that's a very very valid point in my experience having lived through different periods of my life with mental health conditions it's support that i've needed like professional support as well as medication obviously to express myself and talk about how I feel and learn how to manage myself. I've needed that from a mental health professional, not a work coach. So what they're suggesting here is that the government are pushing people into work, people that have got mental health conditions, pushing them into work and having work coaches support them instead of mental health professionals. And if you have that and you're taking away their money, it's potentially a recipe for disaster. However, saying that, I did something 
uh, the other day I put up a what do you call it I put up a poll and I asked everybody do you think people with mental health conditions conditions sorry should go to work and I'm going to put the results up on the screen in just a second what was really interesting was it, it was completely unanimous okay and here is the results now as you can see that's about close to 100 people in a, a 24 hour period that's how long the poll was up for and there was about 180 people that viewed that question because I put it in my story on Instagram about half the people that viewed it answered the question and everybody had the same answer and that brings me to my next point and final point of this video although decreasing benefits is gonna have an impact on people it's definitely gonna have an impact on people's mental health but in the long run I personally think that there's a chance and I really hope this this does happen that it motivates people into pushing themselves outside their comfort zone and getting back into work. Now, I don't walk around and act as if I'm perfectly recovered and that I can just get on and do anything I want, okay? It's taken me a while to get this video out because I've not particularly felt at my best, but that's okay, that's okay. I work through it, I just crack on do what I've got to do, and then get myself out there again. But not everybody's like that, and that's why I'm a little bit sceptical. I, I can't say whether I think it's a bad idea or whether it's a good idea entirely. I know it's going to affect people, but I just really hope in the long run that it actually motivates people to kind of go, do you know what, okay, yeah, I've been depressed for so long, or I've been anxious like for such a long time but I need to get back to work that's what I want to hear people say I know that's not easy okay I took five months off work a few years back and it was difficult it was really really difficult but the longer I took off it got to a point where I thought Do you know what I need structure I need routine I need incentive because when you're at home feeling low and miserable you can't do much and another aspect of this that I really want to kind of manifest is that if people are going to be going back to work if they're struggling with their mental health at one particular part say like they've been going to work for like I don't know 12 months or six months or a year and something happens in their personal life and it really affects them mentally maybe it's some trauma or something if that happens and someone needs time off work, that should be completely, you know, mandatory. If people were having a bad day with their mental health, then they should be allowed that time off. Now, I don't want people thinking, oh, I can't go to work or I can't attend education because my mental health's really bad. F for a time period, I think that's perfect, obviously, perfectly acceptable, and you should allow that time for rest. But in the long run, we all have to get back to getting into work or parenting, whatever it is that we're doing, that, that full time responsibility. But I'm trying to focus on the work aspect here. Um, I do think that although this is going to scare a lot of people, you know, they hear that their money's being taken away instantly especially if you've got conditions like AUPD or bipolar or schizophrenia, it can trigger something so, so fast. I just don't want people to think that this is the end of the world, okay, just because their money's got stripped. But guys, if you receive benefits, obviously that's, that's fair enough. And if yours are being decreased, you know, I, f I, f I feel for you. It's not, it's not easy when you your income is... You know kind of either cut off or decreased whatever but we do have to get back to work we do have to contribute to society you know if we've got like physical disabilities as well as mental health 
dis uh, conditions and it's nigh impossible for us to work. I, I totally get that. But if we're physically able and our mental health isn't doing like too well, if we need that time off, take that time off. But once we get through that, once we work through it, we've got to we've got to go back to work or attend education. We can't can't hide forever. I know it's difficult, but oh, you just you've got to try and push yourself. Really, really push yourself. OK, everyone, I'd like to know your thoughts. Please leave comments down below. Tell me how you feel. What kind of position are you in? Are you are you working full time? Are you working part time? Are you studying and working? Are you just studying? Are you a stay at home parent? I just I like to know what my or you or you lot are um, doing with themselves in, in that aspect. Right. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. Sorry, it's been a while since I've done the video, but it's been a bit. Yeah, I felt really anxious about making this video, so take care.